The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to today's Inspiring Women with your host, Deanne DeMarco. On today's program, you'll meet the next business and entrepreneurial rising star. You'll learn from their successes, challenges, and life lessons to find out what has made them recognized in their fields. Now, here is your host, Deanne DeMarco. Welcome to Today's Inspiring Women. I'm your host, Deanne DeMarco. Today's Inspiring Women is a mentoring show designed to give you tools and strategies to excel professionally. Each week, we connect you with extraordinary women, explaining their careers and giving you advice, success tips, and ideas to help you spark your professional and life growth. And I'd like to thank all of those of who have been emailing me. Last week I received an email from someone from Belarus um, about how much they like the show. So I'd like to thank you very much for those emails. Keep them coming. I love it, love it, love it. And if you're interested in getting five quick tips every week on how to spark your professional life growth, send me an email and I'll put you on the list and get you out the five quick tips every week. This show is about resilience today. We have got two remarkable women coming on on the air today. Our first guest is uh, you're not gonna. You, I hope you're sitting down because you're not gonna believe this woman's story. And I'm just gonna tell you a little bit from being trafficked to Japan <laughs> with a drug with a drug lord um, and to finding coming back and bouncing back. And our second guest is the actual princess from Africa, and she's going to be talking about resilience as well. So today's show is all about resilience. I can't wait to introduce you to our first guest, Marty McGibbon is our first guest. And Marty's life story is like a Hollywood thriller, lifetime movie, and romantic comedy all rolled into one. Marty was one of the first women to work as a laborer in the Texas oil fields, actually setting off explosives. She then switched to surveying and staking oil wells. Her spontaneous sense of humor led to a career in stand-up comedy in the 1980s, where she was to share the stage uh, in comedy with Sam Kinston and Bill Hicks. After moving to California and landing scheduled appearances on The Tonight Show, Mary became entangled in an abusive relationship, drug addiction, and desperation. She wound up being trafficked to Tokyo and held prisoner by Japanese organized crime figures. Can you believe this? She escaped barely with the help of a Hong Kong smuggler. The tragedy Marty experienced left her traumatized and homeless. But she used positive visualization, resentless resiliency, and hard work to literally turn her life around. Marty McGibbon today is an inspirational speaker, stand-up comic, and certified mental health professional and author of the nationally award-winning memoir, Never Give In to Fear, Laughing All the Way Up from Rock Bottom. Marty, welcome to today's Inspiring Women. Oh, hi, Deanne. Oh, it's great to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I got to tell you, the first one I have met who has had this type of life story. <laughs> you know, oh, holy yes. smokes. Yes, it's, it, it's interesting. You um, know, you've had so many traumatic things happen to you. How in the heck were you able to turn your life around? Well, it, it, I'm so glad you asked that. It, you know, anyone can create a positive change in, in in their lives. I mean, any one of us can do this. And and um, it's the knowing. And I, I want all of your listeners to to know that every one of you, um, every one of us, we we all have um, a unique experience of life, right? So even Terrible things can have taught us 
uh, really valuable lessons and and survival skills and talent. And the good things have taught us that too. So everything we experience, we've come away from it with something valuable that we can share with the rest of the world. And a lot of times when bad things happen to you, you start thinking, well, that makes you a bad person. And that happened to me. As you read in my bio, I was traumatized. But um, – Here's what happened. Let me just quickly tell you. When I, when I was trafficked, and, and I, I won't give any details about this, but except that if you can imagine yourself in a, in a, a faraway country where you don't speak the language and you're, you're locked up in a, a room and you, you're being raped and <clears throat> threatened with death and physically abused and, and you're just absolutely terrified and you have no idea when you're going to get back to your homeland. Well, that happened to me. And I... I was at the point where I just, I, it was the end, right? But adversity, and that was the most extreme adversity I think that's ever happened to me, but it introduced me to a part of myself that was greater, um, higher, you know, just a bit, because my courage came to me at, at the breaking point, and, and I, I kind of accessed this anchor within that we all have, you know, like right before you fall asleep at night, when you, when it's just you, when when you're just alone, even even if you have someone sleeping beside you, you know, you're just alone, or it's you and God, or uh, mm-hmm. you know that place that we all have. I I realized that that was my place, and I I thought this is my real estate, and this is where I'm going to take my stand, and no matter what is coming at me on the outside, you know, I refuse to. This this is where I make my stand. And um, I made myself two promises. Uh, One was I'm going to be home for Christmas. And it was early November. um, Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and the other was uh, the other promise was that I was going to treat the people around me with as much uh, just human dignity and respect as I could possibly, you know, um, Mm. do. (laughs) I mean, not, for their sakes, but for my own, so I could hang on to my identity and who I am. And those two promises gave me courage and the ability to just to survive it. But I hung on to that visualization of getting home by Christmas. That was it. I mean, I just kept visualizing that. And and as it turned out, the exact right person came into that place that helped me to escape. And I got back to the, to the United States um, two days before Christmas Eve. So it was just like... Uh, when I lived through that, I didn't realize this until later when I did turn my life around. But looking back, I thought, wait a minute, I have that anchor. I have this place within me, and I can do anything. If I could survive something that horrible, then I can do great things, and I can do fun things, and I can really change my life, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's that's just how it is. I mean, we all... Who we are and where we live is within us, and no one can stop, you know, no one can take that away, really. And if I hadn't escaped, I look, I think back on that now, I speak to tra- women who are traumatized, women in jail, and I tell them, even, even if I hadn't escaped, I, I still lived in a better place within my own mind <laughs> anyway, uh-huh. you know, even if they had killed me, which they didn't, and I'm one of the lucky ones, I'm very grateful for that, but do you know what I mean? Life is moment yeah. to moment. And, you know, so that's how I turned my life around. I mean, after being traumatized and and all this stuff that happened, and, you know, I was a drug, I was trying to cope with the trauma in all these ways. But at the point that I turned around, I accessed that anchor point again, and I was just like, I can do this. And I began to look around my life, and one of the things I saw that was holding me back was drugs. Uh, And I got off drugs, and I, I just started visualizing myself as I as I wanted to be, you know, successful, happy, um, prosperous, you know, just to do, you know all the things that 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 I wanted to be, and I would just view myself that way and just act as if, and that's how I turned it around. And and of course, I got connected to a positive support network, so I had you know mentors and uh, start, um, it sounds like it started, you know, it sounds like it started with belief in yourself for a better state for yourself. Yes, exactly. And and just knowing that within me, you know, and, and every one of us, you know, no matter what you're facing, you still have you. And right. you don't have to be defined by your circumstances. Do not be defined by your circumstances. Do not be defined by uh, things that have happened to you. Know who you are and be proud of who you are and just just live that. Live like you mean it and just love yourself. 
and you can do anything. That's really <laughs> You know, one of the things you talk about is vis- visualization. You know, uh-huh. can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about that and how would a person use that in their everyday life? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's really simple. Um, you know, I use it in meditation, and I uh-huh. would recommend that for everybody just because when you meditate, and even, even just for a couple of minutes a day, the research is in that just a couple minutes a day of, of simple meditation uh, really does a lot to reduce stress and some other things. So <clears throat> if you are in a state of a meditative state, you're a little more relaxed, of course, a little more. <laughs> That's an, an understatement, right? You're more relaxed. And when you get into that relaxed state, then you can begin your visualization and just see yourself. Um, one way to do it is just see yourself in, as if you're in a movie and watch the movie unfold the way you want it to be and just accept in that moment that it is real and it is happening just in the moment because your mind doesn't know the difference um, if in time, right? Um, they know this from neuroscience. So if you're visualizing the thing happening, it you feel the benefits immediately. Even in, it, It's really cool. <laughs> and, and you can see it as a movie. You can just um, have, to have a visual image of yourself in the way that um, – that you want to be. I have, um, I talked with a woman after uh, one of my um, speeches who had become a doctor from just, she came from rock bottom and she became a doctor and she said she would just see herself in her doctor, in a white doctor coat. <laughs> she would just do that every night before she went to sleep and, and she said then, you know, when she got her MD and she had her, you know, she was dressing for the hospital, she realized, oh, this is exactly like the coat I've been <laughs> You know, it, it's just a simple thing, but it keeps your mind um, focused, and uh. you you help yourself to believe that it is possible. So you can visualize um, in a lot of different ways, or you can visualize just during the day. Some people use things like um, putting up an image on on the wall, like a picture. There are different ways of doing it, but I suggest the one the way I use is as I explained with the meditation, and then when I visualize what I, I um, want to achieve, then I feel a positive emotion. Like I'll take the moment to just um, luxuriate in the positive emotion of, oh my gosh, that's how it's going to be when it happens, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And and that really kind of kicks it into high gear. And um, and then I take action, of course. You know, you, you can't just visualize and not do anything. You've got to visualize and then take the steps in your life to create the change. And that's why, you know, your show is so cool Uh because it's mentoring. Because when you get connected to a support network of professionals and mentors and therapists and teachers and, you know, all those things, you can achieve. You you can get there. Uh You know, I think you just mentioned some really important things. We're going to take a, take a break here in a, in a minute or two. But I mentioned some really important things. One is that you, you mentioned that you need to have the courage to really deep dig within yourself on the state that you want to be in and to believe in that. Yes. And then the second thing is the visualization piece is kind of like a segue past that of after you believe in yourself, now visualize the state that you want to be in, and then start taking action to, yes. to make that happen. Yes. So it's, not just a, so it's not just a dream. It's, it's, the, it's the desire plus the action. Yes, and the visualization gives you the excitement to keep it. Keep to keep it, it alive. Former, you know. And remember, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the conscious decision to move through the fear to your goal. That's all. Oh, I, I love that. Feel fear. Courage you is a conscious really decision to move forward. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. You know, we need to take a quick break here. We can come back and talk a little bit more about some other advice you might have for women who might be facing trauma in their lives. Stay tuned. This is Deanne DeMarco with today's Inspiring Women. We'll be right back. Find out what makes the most successful people tick. Keep listening to the Voice America Empowerment Channel. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. 
One of the biggest challenges facing corporate America today is accountability. Lack of accountability results for more than 50% of all business failure. Lack of responsibility, strategy, and follow-up are just some of the culprits that kill accountability. Deanne DeMarco knows firsthand how to drive accountability in your business or organization. Deanne DeMarco is one of the most sought-after advisors and coaches in corporate America. Companies that use Deanne as their company coach often call her their chief accountability officer. Your company or business will grow with Deanne as your CAO. Call 866-91-COACH or email Deanne at DeanneDeMarco.com for more information. My name's Ken, and I am as general a contractor as you'll find. I do kitchen remodeling, additions, plumbing, painting. Ken does it all. And I'm Mandy. The owner of the UPS store in my neighborhood. And Mandy here does it all, too. She handles Ken's packing and shipping. Because when you're remodeling a bathroom and a client changes their mind on a light fixture or a mirror, Mandy packs it up and ships it out. She also helps Ken promote his business, like with these new brochures we printed, new business cards. And the flyers are great, too. In fact, when I'm at a job and I'm expecting a delivery? I sign for it. I even let him know with a text or email. Since I got a mailbox at the UPS store. I have to say, as much as I love being on my own, I'm not alone. I've got Mandy here. To help with the heavy lifting? Well, figuratively speaking. To find a locally owned center near you, visit the UPSstore.com. We love small businesses. We love logistics. The UPS Store franchise locations are independently owned and operated. Services, pricing, and hours of operation may vary by location. See center for details. Find out what makes the most successful people tick. Keep listening to the Voice America Empowerment Channel. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com You are tuned into Today's Inspiring Women with Deanne DeMarco. We'd love to hear your questions and comments about our program. Please send an email to Deanne at DeanneDeMarco.com. That's D-E-A-N-N-E at DeanneDeMarco.com. Now, back to Today's Inspiring Women. Welcome back. This is Deanne DeMarco with Today's Inspiring Women, and we have got Marty McGibbon on the line. And Marty, um, you've, the first segment you told us a lot about what happened to you and how you um, really kind of overcame your circumstances by having the, the literally the courage to deep dig deep within yourself you know so you're a stand-up comedian so how important is is humor uh, in overcoming adversity well a sense of humor um, is, is always good because laughter if you if you can laugh, it takes the edge off of stress and pain, <laughs> and it balances the, uh, both hemispheres of the brain too. But um, the other thing is that if you if you just embrace and practice a commitment to never take yourself too seriously, that's the key <laughs> to to, uh, to facing challenges and moving through adversity. You don't have to be laughing about things that are happening right then or anything like that. Just find anything that that makes you laugh and lightens things up. Funny movie, she, whatever. It, it really is helpful. Um, but, you know, laughter is. You know, I've heard that laughter is a, is a great medicine to try and help relieve stress. Mm-hmm. You know, and so adversity as well kind of would go right along with that. So tell us about, you know, how good things happen even when you're down. You made a mention of that earlier. So how, how does, I mean, when you're down and out, how can good things happen? Well, they do. They're um, a lot of times, well, just to be able to see the opportunities when they come, um, to try to just stay in that positive state of mind, expecting something good to come, like <laughs> You know, uh, but I want to just tell you when I when I was absolutely rock bottom homeless, right? I had just the sur- survival items in a backpack. That's all I had, and I was working these manual labor jobs, like digging ditches. I'm laughing about it, not well. I'm just laughing about it because I'm so happy now that it's not happening anymore. But anyway, uh, this was going on, and um, I had one thing in my backpack that was a non-essential, and it was a pair of uh, like high heeled dancing shoes that I bought at a thrift store. And uh, I'm telling you, I was sleeping in abandoned houses, under bridges, stuff like that. It was really rock bottom. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, but I had these shoes, and they were my symbol of hope. I thought, one of these days, I'm going to get on my feet. You know, I'm going to get out of this situation, and I'm, gonna, I'm going dancing, right? And uh, so one night, I was hitchhiking from one 
from my ditch digging job. You know, <laughs> it was like, okay, and uh, it was all foggy and it was really scary. And I, I, this guy pulled over and and he gave me a ride and he was just adorable. I mean, he was good looking and he and he was charming and he had a a dog. His dog was real sweet. His dog sat on my lap and I was thinking and we were talking and I didn't even want the ride to be over. I just thought, oh, I, this guy, I, this is a guy that I could to date, you know, and then, then I thought, oh, wait a minute, you know, girl, you're homeless, you know, just whatever, but anyway, um, that guy, um, not only, you know, I had my dancing shoes in the back, but the thing about him, it's a long story short, is that guy, not only did we go dancing, I mean, not that night, but later, not only did we go dancing, but he's my husband now, and we've been together 27 years. And, wow. you know, it was kind of like a, the people say, oh, that's a Cinderella story. Actually, it was a Cinderella story as told by Quentin Tarantino because he was mm-hmm. in the drug world, too. But we came out of it together, and we, we created this wonderful life together. And, wow. you know, we, I, 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 I've been in recovery for, uh, it's going on 20 years now. It's 19 years. It'll be 20 years in August. So, um, you know, it's just you never know. You just never know something good might happen, and yeah. um, and then just have the courage to just keep your eyes open, so that when it happens, you allow it to happen. Yeah, you know Julie Andrews reminds me of Julie Andrews tells the same type of story. You know when she had that surgery and lost her voice, and she couldn't sing anymore, and so now she's mm-hmm. writing children's books. You know, and so she says the oh, same thing that when you're that when you're down and out, um, be prepared for another window to open. Yes. Which is exactly what happened. You know, so you talked earlier also about having gratitude. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, attitude is everything, and gratitude is the ultimate attitude adjustment. So that's, that's, that's it. And it's a game changer. So if you just focus on a gratitude list, and I, I tell people, uh, I speak all over the country, I tell people just have your big three. It's a real quick gratitude list game changer during the day. My big three is I'm alive, I'm not on drugs, and I'm not locked up anywhere. <laughs> you know, so those are my big three. That's like, I'm good. You know, I'm not, no matter what happens during the day, I can go, I got my big three. And then I'll stop and have the gratitude. And it helps. Hmm. So everyone should come up with their own big three. Yeah, everybody can come up with their own big three. Whatever it is, just have your, your, your big three. Huh. I mean, you can add to your gratitude list, too. I mean, you know, you can have a long list. Huh, that's, a very, that's, that's an interesting concept is to have your your big three gratitude. What is your big three for gratitude? Yeah. And yours, yours are you're alive. You're, what were your, your other two? I'm alive. I'm not on drugs. <laughs> and, and, I'm, um, and I'm not locked up anywhere. You know, I'm not locked up by the Yakuza in oh. Japan. I'm not mm-hmm. locked up in a jail. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey. Right, you know, and and, wow. and if I have something happen during the day, like the printer runs out of ink, and I start to say to myself, this is a nightmare, then I remember, oh, no, no, that's not. I got my big three, baby, you know, <laughs> and it brings me back to reality. It very, you know I what I mean? It, it, could, it could be I'm loved, I, I'm, yeah. I can breathe, you know, whatever you, your, your big three is. Big three R. Wow, that's kind of cool. I, I I have never heard of that concept before, and that's it's actually kind of a cool one to to be thinking about. So, what are, what other advice do you have for women who might be facing trauma in their lives today? Yes, the the number one thing is, and I mentioned it before, if something bad has happened to you, that doesn't say anything about you, and bad experiences don't have to to stop. You're, you know, you just, you can move on. And the first thing to do is get away from the shame and fear. There's shame and fear attached to trauma. And that holds us back. Mm-hmm. We tend to isolate when we're hurt. The, uh, go the opposite. Take contrary action against the shame and fear and reach out and get connected to people who will help you. Therapists. There are wonderful trauma therapists. I have, that's, I resolved my, I had PTSD. And I saw a wonderful trauma therapist who helped me so much, helped me to reframe the experience and see the courage. You know, it's, a lot of it is just, yeah, so that's it. Get connected to, to professionals who can, who can help you with the trauma and then build your positive support network, mm-hmm. people who 
who are you know who are who are positive who will and and you don't and then the third thing the the uh, the third thing is to just heal and as you heal because your healing is within you your your inner healing force is your power it, it, you have it and when your healing happens you mm. reach out to others and you the healing actually you don't even have to reach out to the healing just ripples out and it it's actually it's it's just it's um it's wonderful and when you when you have that healing then you reach out to others some people reach out through art um you might reach out you don't have to necessarily do what i do i speak about it but just in the simple act of loving another mm-hmm. person or a pet or you, you know just it, the simple act of living well you know what i think is really peace. important there that you're That's really saying here. healing with others. You don't have yeah. to tell anyone even, but just share it with others. Share that healing. Yeah, I think what's really important that you're saying here is don't go it alone. Yeah, you know, you, you don't do have to, alone. you know, and there's a lot of different programs, whether it be AA if it's a, if it's a drinking thing or NA mm-hmm. or uh, abuse programs. I mean, there's through yes. like the YWCA's or YMCA's, you know, just don't go oh, it yeah. alone. Reach out and start developing that support network that you need. Yes, and just reach out and don't, there's no shame in getting help. Yeah. No <laughs> shame. And there are so many community services that are free. Yeah. And yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your book. I mean, never, I mean, I read it. It was just uh, an incredible yeah. memoir. I mean, it was just uh, made your stomach turn sometimes, actually. <laughs> never, never give in to fear, laughing all the way up from rock bottom. Why don't you yeah. tell us a little bit about your book? Yeah, well, uh, Kierkegaard's Reviews called it uh, a gritty memoir of addiction. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, other reviewers have called it a triumph of the human spirit. But, you know, it's, it's both. And, um, it's uh, it contains uh, harsh language, so if anyone has problems with that, I, I just want to warn any reader. But the reason it did is that I wanted it, wanted it to be as real as possible. Uh, it, it's about the years, oh, the, the the years of my life, you know, the trafficking and the domestic violence and the addiction. But I wrote it as a stand-up comic, you know, I, I, and so I put in as much humor as possible, and uh, so I, I'm. I uh, it, it's my art form. It's one of the things I did with my healing. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to write a, uh, um, a memoir about this. And 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 I also, when I wrote it, I hoped that maybe some woman might read it and who is headed down the path of addiction or or something, and and um, might read it and be laughing and then go, wow, you know, maybe I better slow down, and and maybe it might might stop someone else from going o- over the abyss like I did, right? Yeah. But it's turned out I've gotten a lot of feedback from readers all over uh, the country and, and also internationally, and people find it a, a very interesting book and also just a message of, of um, you know, triumph. And, um, and if I it survived is. the things I did and was able to turn my life around and go back to stand-up comedy, go back into a life, now I'm a speaker, nationally award-winning author. I mean, things can happen like that, and I'm, you know, my life was a train wreck. Um, yeah. Anyway, you know, we only have about a minute left. How do people yeah. get hold of a, a copy of your book? Oh, uh, well, it's widely distributed, so you can go to a, any bookstore and order it, or you can order it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you know, all, any of those things. It's an e-book on all the platforms, so, you know, you can get it. And the book, is called, also, get, and the book huh? again, is called Never Give In to Fear, Laughing All the Way Up from Rock Bottom by Marty McGibbon. And that's M-A-R-T-I. M A C G I B B O N. Well, yes. how do uh, I, you know? Or you can, can go to nevergiveintofear dot com. That's my website, and you can I, find the link to to order the book too. Nevergiveintofear dot com. That's really good as well. Can people find out? Um, we only have thirty seconds left. Can people find yep. out um, where to see you live on your comedy routines? Uh, yeah. Um, Go to my website, nevergiveintofear dot com, and you can you can contact me. Uh, right now, I'm a humorous, inspirational speaker. First and foremost, I do have a big comedy show coming up in Indianapolis, October 10th. It's called Laughaholics, but there's a page for that. I do it every year. It's a fundraiser. Um, 
So, yeah, you can see me, and and I'm speaking all around the country. I'm going to Iowa in a couple of days, and I'm going to be in Washington, (laughs) D.C. I'm going to Wichita to talk to women who are cancer patients, and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun, Um, wonderful healing thing. Uh, I'm I'm just going all over the place, so just check out my website and... So the and, website, you know, is, call me. I've got the web- my phone number on there. If anybody wants to call me or email me, I'm, I'm here. Okay, great. So never give in to fear dot com. It's how how to find out more about you and your book. Never get into fear, laughing all the way from rock bottom is available at all your bookstores and Amazon dot com. Marty, I'd like to thank you very much for being on today's inspiring women. Thank you, Dan- Deanna. Thank you so much for having this show. It's a wonderful, wonderful show. Thank you so much. You know, we need to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about being resilient and moving forward in your life. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Success starts here. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. It's your world. I'm Steve, and I just opened my own barbecue restaurant. I'm the sauce master, but I'm no expert in printing. And I'm Mary. I own the UPS store in Steve's neighborhood, and I help with professional printing like flyers and posters to promote Steve's restaurant. Steve loves being on his own. But I'm not alone, thanks to Mary. To find a locally owned center near you, visit the UPSstore.com. We love small businesses. We love logistics. The UPS store franchise locations are independently owned and operated. Services, pricing, and hours of operation may vary by location. See center for details. Become a sponsor and position your company to the fastest growing market segment, the women's business market. Your organization has the opportunity to be positioned front and center to the women's business market by becoming a sponsor of today's Inspiring Women with host Deanne DeMarco. The show is broadcast weekly and features guests who are prominent and successful women business owners and influential executives. Businesses that fail to recognize the power of the woman buyer are leaving money on the table. Increase your market share to the fastest growing market segment by becoming a sponsor for today's inspiring women call 708-836-0118 for more information or email deanne directly at info at deannedemarco.com one of the biggest challenges facing corporate america today is accountability lack of accountability results for more than 50 percent of all business failure lack of responsibility strategy and follow-up are just some of the culprits that kill accountability Deanne DeMarco knows firsthand how to drive accountability in your business or organization. Deanne DeMarco is one of the most sought-after advisors and coaches in corporate America. Companies that use Deanne as their company coach often call her their chief accountability officer. Your company or business will grow with Deanne as your CAO. Call 866-91-COACH or email Deanne at DeanneDeMarco.com for more information. Change your world. Change your life. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com You are tuned into Today's Inspiring Women with Deanne DeMarco. We'd love to hear your questions and comments about our program. Please send an email to Deanne at DeanneDeMarco.com That's D-E-A-N-N-E at DeanneDeMarco.com Now, back to Today's Inspiring Women. Welcome back. This is Deanne DeMarco, Today's Inspiring Women. And today we're talking about being resilient. And we have a genuine princess on the line who uh, talks about being resilient in a different way. I can't wait to introduce you to her. Um, We have Dr. Princess Fumi Hancock on the line. She's all those things. She's a princess and a doctor, too. Uh, Princess Fumi is a true African princess as well as a registered nurse turned filmmaker and the host of a lifestyle TV show, The Princess in Suburbia. Her accolades span from Africa to the United States as uh, NAFCA African Oscar People's Choice Award winner as favorite screenwriter, Indefest and Accolade Global Films Merit Award winner and Depth of Field International Film Festival Woman of Excellence Award winner as well. Uh, Let me just tell you a little bit about her background. Um, Princess Fumi grew up in the western region of Nigeria, West Africa, as an African princess. Um, She was being groomed to one day take her responsibility to the royal 
uh, in the royal household that is to help keep her kingdom of Imure uh, kingdom. And she had other dreams of being a prolific and celebrated war writer, both in the literary world as well as in movie production. Her dreams one day were to write books, design clothes, and make a name for herself outside of her royal heritage. And this was a driving force behi- behind her agreeing to her father's demands to come to America to further her postgraduate studies at the age of 17. And she has done a lot, as I've already mentioned. She's an Oscar Award winner. Uh, so Dr. Hancock, or Princess Fumi, is not a stranger to the literary world and has written over 11 books, four of which have become bestsellers. She is a proud recipient of an African Heritage Award for Women in Films. And in September of 2015, this coming year, she alongside a Nobel Prize winner are being honored by the NAFCA African Film Awards in Hollywood, California, for her contribution to literary arts. And her one of her books um, will be... Uh, was made into a movie, and that will also be premiering this year. Princess Fumi, welcome to today's Inspiring Women. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. Thank you. Well, well it is just wonderful that you have been able to, to join us. You know, you, you've had a, a very interesting background, oh. and, you know, I, 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 I think it had to be hard to give up all the prestige of being in the royal family to come to America and live fairly simply? Well, you, you, you know something, though. Um, a lot of people ask me that question about how hard was it, but you also have to understand that I was quite young then. And so for me, when you are familiar with something, you're always looking outside of yourself. You're always thinking that there's something bigger and better out there. And so I was in a stage in my life where I wanted to just explore the world. I wanted to see something that was outside of my community, outside of the palace, just outside of how I was raised. And so, and, and to tell you the truth, though, my dad, my parents really did a great job at making sure that our behavior, our, be, our attitude is checked. And so we were not spoiled. Let me put it to you that way. We were not spoiled. We were not spoiled brats at all. In fact, at the age of nine, I ended up in a boarding school just to go learn etiquette. So I stopped uh, living in the palace or at home at the age of nine. And so Mm. um, royalty is a little bit different in Africa. Um, It's different from what, I I don't know if you know about this last movie that they had a a while back, Coming to America. Well, that was a movie. Let me just put it that way. That That was a movie. That was a little exaggerated, was it? <laughs> oh, you think? It was more, I mean, it was quite exaggerated. So yeah. I was really raised to, um, to understand that being in royalty is a service. It's not something that you take up and, you know, and, and just be out there doing whatever you want. But it's, it's, it's a position of service to people. Mm-hmm. And that's how I was raised. You know, one of the things that I, I love about um, some of your books and the information you that you write about is you talk about having an inner genius, yeah. and that inner genius leads to success. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, yeah. Now, one thing that I do know is that we, you know, people in the science world talk about DNA, and everybody has their own unique DNA. Even twins do not have the same DNA. And so when you talk about inner genius, you're talking about a specific DNA that you were designed, that was designed in you and nobody else could duplicate. And so when you talk about your inner genius, we're essentially talking about your DNA, your, your spiritual, emotional, physical, your DNA that sets you apart from everybody else. It's that inner genius in you that says, hey, you were called to be this apart from this other person. So when you're talking about inner genius, you're talking about that humph, that special thing that you have that nobody else can duplicate. Mm-hmm. So, so how would you recommend that we ignite our inner genius? Well, th- thank you for that. Thank you so much for that question because a lot of times I speak 
and I speak to a lot of women that are in the position where they're transitioning from one, uh, either from a job to another job, or they're just transitioning their life transition, and they're not quite sure um, what they were meant to be. And so a lot of the things that I do, or we're going to talk about today, is talking about those things that have actually helped me. And one of the things that have helped me is also knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. There are many people out there that they are not willing to invest in themselves or even invest in their own dreams. But when you have knowledge, one of the things that your show is doing is actually creating a platform where people can tap into knowledge. And I've listened and listened to a lot of the interviews that you've heard. People have the opportunity to be able to tap into knowledge through your show. And so one of the first things that you want to do is have the ability to tap into knowledge. So when there's something going on about a particular thing that you're interested in, you want to be the first to find out about it. So that's the number one rule. Learn to tap into knowledge around you because knowledge is power. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, you know, I think it, until I die, I'll always be looking for more and more knowledge. You know, I don't think it will ever stop. And I think that's an important key. And there's are some people that just like, it's like they just quit. And uh-huh. I, I, I don't understand that. And then they, then they complain about they're not getting the success that they want. Absolutely. You know, you know, and I just shake my head going, you know, if you really wanted to be successful, you need to invest in yourself and get and continue getting knowledge. <laughs> you know, in, Absolutely. In, in, Absolutely. We have in your, a lot of people whatever. out there now that they are not willing to invest in themselves. They want everything for free. You know, if it's free, they're there. But if it means they have to invest a certain amount of money to it, towards it or invest anything at all, then they're not interested. But the thing is, if you, if you want somebody to be interested in what you are interested in, then you have to invest in somebody else's dream. And so knowledge, when you invest, when you, for example, um, if, you were, if, if you were to interview somebody on your show today or any other time, and that person has um, a conference going on, say even you, you have a conference that's going on, there should not be any reason where someone that's listening would not say, you know what, I need knowledge. What Deanne is talking about, I want some of those. And so you have to take the action. Take the action by tapping into knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, Many people have have talked to me about, oh, princess, there are times we read about your life and it looks like just a series of miracles. But, but, But... but miracles, from what I understand, miracle is opportunity when opportunity uh, means preparedness, and then preparedness pushes you to take action. That's what mm. miracle is about. And so that's what we're talking about today. You're tapping into your inner genius and mm-hmm. creating the miracle that you deserve for yourself. I really love that. You know, I, that's, that's really a good point. I mean, unless you are prepared... And you get prepared by getting knowledge, whether you're investing in time or money to, to learn that knowledge. You can't be ready for the opportunity to come across your door. No. Uh-uh. The, no. Two go to get, the two go together. You know, you they, need they, it. It starts, it starts ingredients. with you taking they're action first. That have to be complete for you to get to where you need to get to. There are ingredients that have to be complete for your inner genius to be ignited and thrusted out of you. If you're not, you know, you can't be prepared uh, and then... Um, an opportunity comes comes along and you're not prepared. It's like, oops, oh, my God, that's an opportunity, but, oh, oh, God, I can't do it because I'm not ready. You know, yeah. so a lot of us are like that. We have two of the ingredients, but, yeah, we're missing one, or we have one of it, and we're missing the whole other ones. And, and for us to successfully ignite our dreams and harness our vision is essential that we understand that, Opportunity, taking action, being prepared, all those things work together to become the miracle that you deserve. Yeah, I mean, the one thing, though, that I think women need to be aware of also, and there's a big difference between men and women, yeah. is men will look for that opportunity when they are only 20% prepared, uh-huh. whereas okay. women will wait until they're 80% prepared before they look for that opportunity. <laughs> 
You know, yeah. and I and I think that's one of the differences that holds a lot of women back is they they need to start looking for those opportunities as they're in their journey, as compared to waiting till they've got all the apples in the basket. That's it. I'm, I'm yeah. so glad that you said that because I think when I look back into my the things that I've done in the past too, I think I've been guilty of that too. Where uh, with women, we want perfection. Right. And, 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 and that's not necessarily what miracle is. It's not necessarily perfection. It's even there are times you, it, it, when you are stumbling, miracles happen when you're stumbling. I remember there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, an African adage that my father always tells me and talks to me about. And this is kind of like, maybe I can do like a direct translation. And it talks about when you have a car and it's parked, he doesn't care if you come back two years from now. You come back to that same spot. If nobody turns the key on, it will remain parked. Now, if you're not careful, three years down the road, you might come and the tires, somebody's come, taking the t- stolen the tires, mm. and they've kind of dissembled it. And this is what dreams is all about. This is what our dream, our vision is all about. If you park it, I'm telling you right now, nothing is going to happen to it. I can come back to you 10 years from now and say, hey, what are you doing with that dream? If it's parked, it will remain parked. So it's essential for us to understand that we are a part of that, of that which we desire. Our miracles or our vision is not going to happen outside of yeah. us. Well, We're I not going to sit on the side and be watching it happen. We have to be a part of it. We have to be yeah. a, a great participant in it. Okay, we need to take a quick break here, but I love that analogy of you got to turn the ignition of your car on to get it moving. You know, we need to take a quick break. We come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about this whole thing around passion. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Change your world. Change your life. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. I'm Steve, and I just opened my own barbecue restaurant. I'm the sauce master, but I'm no expert in printing. And I'm Mary. I own the UPS store in Steve's neighborhood, and I help with professional printing like flyers and posters to promote Steve's restaurant. Steve loves being on his own. But I'm not alone, thanks to Mary. To find a locally owned center near you, visit the UPSstore.com. We love small businesses. We love logistics. The UPS store franchise locations are independently owned and operated. Services, pricing, and hours of operation may vary by location. See center for details. Become a sponsor and position your company to the fastest growing market segment, the women's business market. Your organization has the opportunity to be positioned front and center to the women's business market by becoming a sponsor of today's Inspiring Women with host Deanne DeMarco. The show is broadcast weekly and features guests who are prominent and successful women business owners and influential executives. Businesses that fail to recognize the power of the woman buyer are leaving money on the table. Increase your market share to the fastest growing growing market segment by becoming a sponsor for today's inspiring women call 708-836-0118 for more information or email deanne directly at info at deannedemarco.com one of the biggest challenges facing corporate america today is accountability lack of accountability results for more than 50 percent of all business failure lack of responsibility strategy and follow-up are just some of the culprits that kill accountability Deanne DeMarco knows firsthand how to drive accountability in your business or organization. Deanne DeMarco is one of the most sought-after advisors and coaches in corporate America. Companies that use Deanne as their company coach often call her their chief accountability officer. Your company or business will grow with Deanne as your CAO. Call 866-91-COACH or email Deanne at DeanneDeMarco.com for more information. Success starts here. VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. It's your world. You are tuned into Today's Inspiring Women with Deanne DeMarco. We'd love to hear your questions and comments about our program. Please send an email to Deanne at DeanneDeMarco.com. That's D-E-A-N-N-E at DeanneDeMarco.com. Now, Back to Today's Inspiring Women. 
Welcome back. This is Deanne DeMarco, Today's Inspiring Women, and we have Princess Fumi from On the Line, and we're talking about um, harnessing your inner genius for, for success. And one of the things I would like to talk about is this whole belief around self-talk and some of the lies that we often buy into us for achieving the success we desire. What are your, what are your thoughts around that? Well, I am too old. I can never make it. I don't have what it takes. I have made too many mistakes. There's no comeback. These are the self-talks that kind of cripple us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all those lies that we tell ourselves around our self-talk. Yeah. So, so we need to change the self-talk, right? Or how do you overcome that? Well, the first thing you want to do is knowing who you are. Now, I'm not sure if, you're, uh, if the listeners there are mostly Christians or not. There is always something about a belief. You first have to believe in yourself. Know who you are. When you know who you are, then acknowledge that you are uniquely created. For whatever position that you're meant to do, you are uniquely created. So once you understand that you're uniquely created, you are in a very good place to start changing and turning that still self-talks around. But you have to know who you are. So so when you say we need to know who you are, what is that? Give me an example of that. An example is just knowing that you, everyone in life, let me put it this way, everyone in life has an assignment. Hmm. And so for you, you also have an assignment. And a lot of times, because earlier we were talking about that inner genius, that inner genius within you, that thing that makes you tick every morning, that's what you were created for. And so if you can just latch onto that and understand that you might not even be able to figure the whole map out right now, but you understand that if you can wake up in the morning and you're breathing, you have a destiny. You have a destiny. And so... That is the first step of understanding all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think you I think you've got a point there. You know, although I think sometimes um, we don't always see. You know, like I said, we can't see the forest or the trees. You know, uh-huh. we, we we can't see our 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 own strengths. Uh-huh. And sometimes it takes an, another person to say, you know, you're you're really good at this and you're really good at that. And you go, oh, I, you know, you're right, I am. <laughs> you know, because sometimes I think we're we're so used to doing certain things we don't realize that we're we have that uniqueness in certain ways. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's why it's always in, it's good to invest in knowledge, as we, yeah. we talked about earlier. Knowledge I, is power. You know, I, I totally agree. And now, one one more question before we have to, we before we I want to talk about your movie and your book just a little bit. Yeah. Um, one more question here: Do you use vision a vision map for your goals? Yes, I do. But mine is kind of a little bit different uh, because I've studied a lot of vision maps out there. But for me, I anchor everything that I do on an event, and that's how I do my vision mapping. I anchor mm. it. We have either events that make that are painful or events that make us happy. And so for me, when I do vision mapping, I always find some events in my life that I can anchor things on. And that's what of sentimental value, the movie and the book, is all about. Anchoring something, one event can change your life forever. Now you go find that event and anchor your destiny with that. Oh, that's very cool. I never see. I never heard of it that way. You know, yeah. tell us a little bit about of sentimental value. Um, you, you have a book by that title, and you also have a movie coming out with that title, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, of sentimental value, the movie was uh, a, a script, a screenplay that I wrote several years ago, and um, after writing the novel a few years ago, and it became a bestseller. I, I started thinking about, oh wow, perhaps this is something that I could actually share in the movies. And so it's, it's just a story of an African immigrant in, in America who comes into, into a, a country that is foreign to her. And all the nuances, the things that she had to, the hurdle that she had to overcome just to fulfill the dreams of became, becoming a bestseller. And you all know that this is not just African. I mean, it's also even Americans here, how we struggle to be who we really know that we're meant to be. And so 
that is just a love story as well as a story of hope, of restoration, a healing story that lets you know that at the end of the day, if you stay true to your calling, you will get there. So that's the bottom line with that story of sentimental value, that you all, we all are of sentimental value. It doesn't matter what background, what culture, what creed, we are all of sentimental value. Oh, I really like that. And, and I understand you have another you have another book coming out that you're working on around vision. Well, tell us a little yes. bit about that. We only have about a minute left. Tell us about that. Okay. So we have your vision torch, and your vision torch essentially is going to be teaching people how to harness their vision and, how, of course, how to re-engineer their purpose, their life purpose. Because a lot of people do know what they're meant to do, but they don't know how to connect. They're disconnected with that vision or disconnected with their calling. And release your vision torch will be essentially a torch that they can use as a guide to help them re-engineer their life purpose. So stay tuned. Oh, cool. So when that book comes out, make sure we get together and we put you back on the air. Absolutely. You know, we we have to wrap it up here. Our time has just gone by. So how do people um, see the movie? Well, the movie is going to be released August of this year, 2015. So I would advise people to just go into offsentimentalvaluemovie.com. And when you get on that page, then all the information of the release and everything is on there, offsentimentalvaluemovie.com. That's great, offsentimentalvaluemovie.com. Also, yeah. if they Google Princess Fumi, it will come up yeah. as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Just, just Which is really cool. and everything is going to come out. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for being on today's Inspiring Women. Thank you so much for having me, Deanne. You know, each week I, I bring to you and connect you with extraordinary women exploring their careers and success tips and ideas to help you spark your professional life growth. If you know of anyone who could use this information or could use our five quick tips, please tell them to tune in to today's Inspiring Women or to email me about the five quick tips. And each week I end with a quote and an action. And your quote this week is, you have the power to heal your life. We think so often that we are helpless, but we're not. We always have the power of our minds. And that's by Rudis, uh, writer Louise Hay. So your action for this week is to reframe or turn one of your negative thoughts into a positive one. Until next time, have an extraordinary day. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Today's Inspiring Women. Please join host Deanne DiMarco and other entrepreneurial and business leaders next Thursday at noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Have an outstanding week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management.